Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. Remember that hope stands for healthy overcomers, purpose by God, and maintaining an eternal perspective. Let's open up with a word of prayer, and then we'll begin today's show. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, again for this time. We thank you, Lord God, for our speaker. We thank you for who you are, God. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done in our lives. Father, we pray for those that are listening. We pray, Lord God, for your provision for them, oh God. We pray, Lord, for everything that they need to be provided, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for you're a woman of God today, Lord God, and we pray, Lord God, that you will speak through her and that people will be changed through her testimony. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's hope is one of my favorite scriptures, and it comes from Genesis 2 and 7. And it says, And the Lord God, Jehovah the existing one, formed man of the dust of the ground. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. This particular verse tells me that there is a true and living God, and he purposed each and every one of us. There is more to us than what we see on the outside. We are living souls bearing God's image. Our life is not our own. We didn't just come into existence because of some explosion or evolving from an animal. We have a specific uniqueness that could only have been designed by the designer himself, Jesus Christ. This week's quote, what does it mean to be human? It means we are created in the image of God for the glorious reality of being in permanent fellowship with him. Pastor Ravi Zacharias. Amen. Now let's get started with today's show. I am very honored to take a moment to introduce a very special guest, author Belinda Marie. Belinda, thank you for joining me today. And can you tell us a little bit uh, more about yourself before you begin to tell us about your journey and your ministry? Okay, awesome. Well, first, I want to thank you for creating this platform for authors and women in ministry like myself. I really do appreciate what you're doing. So I just want to say thank you very much, Denise. Well, my name is Belinda, Belinda Marie, and I am, um, let's see, where do I start? I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and most of my family is there. I went to Alabama A&M University, where I have a degree in business administration, and then I went on to grad school to get my master's degree in management. From there, I was able to get an internship with Walt Disney World, and I decided to move to Orlando, Florida, and this has been a great adventure being here. I've learned so much in Florida, in Orlando. I've grown spiritually, and it's been such an awesome experience over the last 13 years. Very thankful for it. So um, I love music. I love to sing. So singing is one of the things that I've done at my ministry, at my church, for the last uh, 10 years. 10 years I've been on our worship team. And I love to write, and I love to teach, and I love to educate and help people. Amen. Thank you for sharing your background information about yourself. Now, Belinda, can you tell us how um, God led you into your personal writing and your ministry that he gave you to start? Well, um, I've been writing since I was a little girl, and I really didn't, I didn't really realize how much um, writing meant to me um, until I began to read a little bit more. I was a reader growing up. My grandmother and my family made sure that I read a lot. And as a result, I had an imagination. And so I remember creating poetry at a very young age. Actually, one of my 
gift to my mother on Mother's Day was a um, collection of poetry. I had put it on a leather piece, a leather like cloth, and I wrote it out and gave it to her. And so that was when I realized, wow, I love to write. And ever since then, I remember when I went to college, I was I wanted to do a magazine actually, because I love music so much. I wanted to do um, at the time a neo soul magazine. I, I, I the art, the new soul of R and B was great, so I wanted to do a magazine for that. And then I wanted to do a magazine to help people. So I knew I always wanted to do something in the area of writing. Currently, what has caused me to want to do more writing is um, just different personal experiences that I've been through. And um, about six years ago, maybe it's been a little bit longer, God laid on my heart just the issues of sex in our culture. And as I began to do more research and look at the things that were going on, I was really, like, heart. my heart just really went out to so many people who were struggling in the area of sexually transmitted diseases. And I just began to look at it, not only because I was doing the research, um, but because I was working at the hospital and I saw patient charts and different things that troubled me. From there, I began to start writing a book uh, about sex, and that kind of sparked my writing a book um, desire in me because I never really thought about writing one until all of this stuff came up. And then I had my own personal experience of heartbreak. I'm 37 years old, single, and really desire to be married. And it's been a journey, and it was a journey that I never thought I would take. Growing up, I always thought that, you know, getting married and meeting that person you want to be with was very simple, but I found it to be very complex for me. There were so many painful situations I experienced, and I don't know if many women are ever prepared for that. When you grow up and you're, you know, just a little girl, three, four years old, you're, you're told you're going to have this fantasy that this man is going to come along and you're going to live happily ever after. That's the whole dream that's given to you. So when you go and you believe and you're hoping for that, and then you go through hurt and pain along the way that you weren't expecting, it can really kind of like, I guess, shock you. Like, wow, I didn't know it was going to be this difficult. I didn't know I would not have children or be married at 37. So... A few years ago, I went through a major heartbreak, and it caused me to want to write about it. And so I then wrote my first book um, called Fool's Gold, Becoming Better, Not Bitter on the Quest for Love. And it was, it was a healing journey for me because it helped me to process my pain in, in a healthy way. And so for myself, I find that writing is, can be healing, for not only for you, but it can be healing for anyone who reads about your story. And everything I believe has to start with, with, with a testimony of some, some sort. Anytime you want to minister to someone else about anything in any area, it's, it's really, to me, what makes the impact is when you've had to walk through it yourself. When you've had to go through it, when you've had to feel it, there's something about that that just, it causes people to really, really hear your story. And um, I'm just thankful that I've had the opportunity to do that. Amen. And you you said something powerful with the um, – when you experienced it. And I, and I oftentimes wonder if, you know, when God allows things to happen, um, that it's not for us. Um, and we don't understand it at the time, but we come to an understanding as we get older. Now, um, I have a question. When your, you know, your testimony, have you ever had anybody, um, a female, single female, that has personally come to you um, that you've helped along the way with since you've been writing your book? Yes, yes. Um, I remember when I finished writing the book, I had an opportunity to speak to um, a men, women's group at my church. And what I thought was really amazing was our, our pastor's wife had read my book, and she was like, wow, you've got to share this. There's so many 
women that are going through what you're talking about, and they need to hear what you have to say. Um, it's practical, and I just think that it will bless so many people. And so I um, spoke, and there were women that would come up to me and talk with me afterwards and just say, wow, that really blessed me. You really helped me. One of the things that I encountered in my experience was dating someone who um, had some issues with alcohol. And I didn't know that he was going through this um, until maybe about a couple of months into talking with him. And so just seeing what he, the, just seeing the level of, of the addiction that he was dealing with and the stuff that he was going through, um, I, I never thought that I would ever have to talk to another woman about it. It just, you know, you, you have these experiences and, you know, you think, okay, that's something I went through. And I met a lady whose husband was dealing with the same addictions, the same issues, and she was just so, so distraught by it because, you know, this is her husband. And she was asking, you know, she was just saying, you know, just pray for me because I don't know what to do. I, I want to be there for him and help him. I think kind of the difference there was this was her husband. For me, this was someone that I had talked to for, for a few months. But even though they both of the relationship, my relationship with this person and her relationship was probably a lot more deeper with this being her husband, I, I could understand because there were behaviors and things that were similar for both men. So to be able to even relate to someone and say, you know what, I understand how you feel. I know what it's like to care about someone who is not able to take care of themselves or doesn't doesn't know how to let go of this addiction, you know. So I, I thought that that was one of the first, when you asked me that, it was one of the first things that came to my mind. And that experience, actually caused me to have more compassion for people that were dealing with this because I just never knew. For me, you know, alcohol, those types of things have never been a vice for me. But to see someone have to walk through it and see him go through it, it was like, wow, okay, this stuff is is real. Um, And I'm just thankful. I mean, I never had to deal with any of it head on or face or deal with it so heavily. So I thank God that um, I, I knew how to back away and say, okay, I can't help this person. But the experience caused me to have more compassion towards people who are walking through it, and it also taught me to just look for different signs um, in regards to someone that's dealing with an addiction. Wow, that's powerful, you know, when you say it, it helped you to be more compassionate because I, I don't think we think about that, those things that we haven't personally experienced and when we have to when we do encounter it, I don't think we really think about God loves those individuals as well, and he doesn't want them in that state. So that that's powerful. Um, one of my other questions is, how were you able to, and you probably kind of answered it already, but how were you able to forgive each time that, you know, I know you said it was very difficult. So what are some of the things you kind of went through to forgive and release those individuals um, when you were talking about those that hurt you? That's a great question. And as you're asking, the first thing that came to my mind was I had to treat each situation separately. It was very important that I treated every individual different separately. And what I mean by that is, no matter how many, how much rejection I've experienced, no matter how much hurt, no matter how much pain, I've never said the words, I hate men. <laughs> I've never said the words, oh, I'll, I, I just, I've never date again or anything like that because I looked at each person as an individual that made a choice. So that was one of the things I did to make sure I, I, I healed well. The other thing was having the mindset that I would not allow, especially in um, in this last situation, I, I would not allow them to walk away with my joy. I won't allow you to walk away with my peace. That's very important. I think that what makes you stronger is when you go into these dating experiences, relationships, whatever you want to call it, you have to go into it knowing who you are. 
You cannot allow anybody to alter your personality or to alter uh, your your core values. And core values is something that I talk about every time I speak because I don't hear it enough. And I'm finding that many people are just avoiding understanding themselves at the core of who they are and really making sure that they know this person and see at the very center and the core of who they are. So, you know, looking at every situation as this is this person, it's not all men. It's not, if you're a guy, it's not all women. But this individual made this choice. So, you know, I, I, I think that's healthy. The next thing is making sure that you know who you are going into it so that way they don't take your joy or your peace with them. And then the other thing that I thought about was, okay, if you are not the person that God has for me, I won't allow my bitterness to rise so that I won't receive what God has for me. We can stop ourselves from receiving great things because we grow bitter. And that's why I think, you know, with the book it was called Becoming Better, Not Bitter. And taking something away from every individual. And also in the book I talk about taking responsibility for the decision to even give that person a chance. Why did I allow them to come into my space? What was going on with me at the time that I said, okay, I'm willing to give this person an opportunity? And what I found is there were times where I was just tired of being by myself. There were times where I was just going through that I just don't want to be alone thing. I think it's just that time. You know, it's my age. I think it's time. I was making it up in my mind that it was time, and I felt like, this was the person. So I, I think it's very important to take responsibility for, for, your, for your decisions and for your choices. That's so critical because when you take responsibility for your choices and your decisions, it, 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 it's, it's very mature and you can actually um, just learn how to just accept that. You own it and you can learn from it. But if you never own own your choices or own up to it, it makes it very difficult, you know, to, to let go. Um, and I think also with, with each situation, I, I, just, I just chose to, I guess, you know, a part of me, there's something in me that was like, you know what, I'm, it's just not going to cause me to just break down and never want to do it again. I, that's just how I felt. And also there was something, even if it wasn't the guy, there was something in each person that I that I that I value, and still to this day, even if it, even if the situ, even if the dating experience didn't go well or if it wasn't the right thing, I learned something from every single man that came in my space. Or there was something about each person that I liked, and I learned okay, I can deal with this. I can't deal with that. I like this. I don't like that. So I think taking it all as one big total experience uh, was really important. And so there's many different steps. Also, just learning how to admit when I was in, admit pain. In, in, in the book I talk about admitting the pain, submitting the pain, and releasing the pain. Admit that you hurt. Never try to cover it up. Never try to act like you're tough or so strong that you are, you know, as hard as a rock and nothing can, can hurt you. If it hurts, you admit it. You submit it to people who love you and they're going to be honest with you. Um, people who love you will tell you the truth about you and about the situation and releasing it by not giving lip service to it over and over and over again, listening to your inner inner voice, listening to really, the, I would say, for believers, the Holy Spirit, when he says, okay, just, some, you know, the Holy Spirit can give you things to say, and he knows how to tell you to be quiet. <laughs> he knows how to tell you to just let it go. So learning how to back up and say, okay, I'm not going to keep rehearsing that pain over and over again with my mouth. I've, I've settled it in my heart, and I'm going to let, let it go. So many different steps there, many different things that you have to do to get past those things. That's good. That's some great advice because I think we all struggle with that, um, letting go. You know, sometimes we'll say, okay, I forgave, but then we still, like you said, we keep, 
rehearsing it. I remember when so and so did this to me. So that's good. That's very good advice. Um, um, thank you for sharing. And the last thing is, how can people purchase your book? How can people um, connect with you? All right. So the book is on Amazon. It's called Fool's Gold, Becoming Better, Not Bitter, on the Quest for Love. And it was written by Belinda Marie. That's um, I titled it Belinda Marie. And it's on Amazon. And it's also on Create Space. Um, my ministry is Purity Nation, Inc., and um, I'm, on, I'm on Instagram at Purity Nation, and I also have a Facebook page, um, Purity Nation, Inc., as well. So you can reach me there, Purity Nation, Belinda Marie on Facebook, and uh, you can purchase the book there, too. Thank you again for sharing, Belinda. I'm going to close out in prayer. And um, I pray blessings for your ministry because so many people need it. Um, you even helped me with some of the advice, and I'm married, but it's still helpful with forgiving. Yes. Yes, I am. All right, we're going to close out in prayer. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for this testimony, for this time, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you – use those things that, you know, your word says that all things work together for the good. So we thank you, Lord God, for using even those things that hurt us, those people that hurt us, Lord God, to turn it around to for you the good to help someone else, Father. Lord, we bless you and we uh, magnify your name, oh God. We thank you for Belinda. We pray, Father God, that you will bless her ministry, um, that you will continue to expound her territory, God. We pray for those that are listening, oh God, and those that you would send to listen to this interview, God, that they will be able to walk in victory and freedom, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And to my listeners, be blessed and continue to hope in Christ.